be done earlier. Um, so I'm Maciel Rodriguez Vars. I'm the executive director of the Montclair Fund for Educational Excellence. I think I know most of you. Um, and I actually started my work with MFEE as a um, grant liaison. So this work is super near and dear to my heart. It is de it's definitely the heart of our organization, helping to support our teachers. Um, and we're gonna talk a lot uh, uh, tonight about how we're pivoting these grants to support our teachers directly with remote learning um, and how we're gonna adapt the process a little bit um, so that the, the teachers can apply relatively quickly and so that they can get their materials relatively quickly so that they can start using them. Um, so I think I'm gonna hand it over to Kathy Malloy, who is um, my colleague and really is the Director of Grants um, and Communications for MFEE. Um, and so she is your, gonna be your point person. She's already been your point person. Um, so Kathy, I'll give it to you and, and turn it over. Okay, do we wanna start and maybe like introduce, have everyone introduce themselves? And... Sure, that'd be great. Okay, so I'll, I'll start. So um, my name is Kathy Malloy. I have a, I had to think about this actually, because so soon, a fifth grader at Wachung and a fourth grader at Bullock, and then a three-year-old who I believe you will probably be hearing along the way. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. So that's, and I did start, also started out as a grant liaison <laughs> way back when. Um, how do we want to, let's say, should I just like call out names and you can say where you're, introduce yourself, okay? So I'll just like go through some of my little screen. So, um, Diane? I didn't know I'd go first, but uh, I am Diane Taranian. I have uh, a third grader and a fifth grader at Hillside and a kindergartner at Nishuane, and I'm volunteering to be a liaison at Hillside, so. Uh, Tracy? Hello, um, yeah, so I have a sixth grader and an eighth grader at Renaissance this year, so I will be a liaison at Renaissance. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, Nancy? Hi, I'm Nancy Sarisky. Um I have a senior, a junior, a freshman at the high school, and a seventh grader at Buzz, and so I'll be one of the Buzz liaisons. Uh, Linda? Hi, I'm Linda Cow. I have uh, three kids in the schools. I have a 10th grader at the high school, an 8th grader at Glenfield, and a 5th grader at Hillside. And uh, this will be my last year's a liaison for Hillside. <laughs> Great. Uh, Jessica? Hi, uh, Jessica True. And I have a, a an eighth grader at Glenfield, and I have a senior at the high school, and I'll be a, lazy, a liaison for the high school. Mm -hmm. Donna? I have Donna Montague. I will be a liaison for um, the high school. My daughter's a freshman, and I was a li li uh, uh, liaison at Wren <laughs> last year. V? Powell, um, I have a daughter who's eighth grade at Glenfield. This is my fourth year being a liaison, something like that. And uh, yes, I do have red wine and s'mores. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're still our only male liaison, so definitely drink up. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Marnie? Hi, uh, I'm all. I have a, a first grader at Wachung, and a, and so I'll be the liaison for Wachung. Amanda? Hi, yes, I'm Amanda Goldman. I have two kids at Northeast, a first grader and a third grader, a two-year-old at home, and I'm excited to start this in my first year working on this project. Thanks. Melissa? Hi, 
um, Melissa Robinson Brown. I have um, a fifth grader and a third grader at Bradford and a three-year-old who's in the pre-K four class at MCPK. And I'm going to be a liaison for Bradford. Kristen? I think I did it. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Kristen. I currently have a sixth grader and an eighth grader at Renaissance. Um, and I was the liaison for CHB when my kids were there. And um, this will be my second year as liaison for Renaissance. Sarah? Are we frozen? Maybe. Let's see. Hi, I have two in my public school, so one in eighth grade at Buzz, uh, and a fifth grader at North. I'm looking forward to working with Amanda um, as North. Liaison. Great. Our way? Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I have a third grader at Hillside, so I'll be the liaison for there. Awesome. And Amira? Hey, everybody. I'm Amira Williams. I have um, two second graders at Nishuan. I have a sixth grader at Glenfield, and I have a freshman at the high school. Um, I was liaison for Hillside for a couple of years when we were there, and I, this will now be my second year as a liaison for Glenfield. Najla? Hi, I'm Najla Nazimuddin. I have, um, I'm the liaison for CHP. I have a fifth grader and a fourth grader this year. All right, now my screen got, let's see, a little bit. Um, Karen? Did you say me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know you said Aaron or Karen. Um, I'm Karen Carter. I have a fourth grader and a kindergartner at Edgemont. And this will be my fourth year as a liaison, I think. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, where am I? Jen? Hi, sorry, I'm uh, Jen Saba. I have a third grader at Bradford and this is my first year as a liaison. Uh, Veronica? Hi everyone, um, I have a third grader at Hillside. This is my first year as a liaison for Hillside and I also have a freshman who is out of district, but was at Wren last year. Awesome. And Kayla. Hi everyone, I'm sorry, I can't have my camera on right now. I'm having bandwidth issues, but I have a second grader at Edgemont and this will be my first year um, being the MFE liaison for Edgemont. All right, does it look like I got it? I think I got everybody, right? Nope. Anyone? Nope. Sheila. Sheila Boy. Oh, there, I see Sheila. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Sheila Boyd. I have a third great daughter at Hillside and this is my first year. Um, as a grant liaison. Awesome. I think that's everyone. Let me just do a quick scan. It, or if anyone we didn't call on you, let us know. A little raise your hand. I think we've got everyone. Awesome. Well, welcome. We are so excited to have you, especially um, our new liaisons. It's so exciting to always have new folks coming in. Um, you really do give us fresh eyes on the process. Um, and certainly help us to connect um, to our teachers. Um, and so Kathy, I'm gonna, I keep jumping in, but <laughs> I'm so excited about Kathy because um, she has mapped out the evening. Um, so I'm super grateful. So Kathy, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Right. You have the agenda. Uh, do you want me to, I'll share just the agenda quickly and we'll look at okay. it and then you can talk a little bit about some general things and then I'll dive into the grant stuff. Awesome. So let's see, share. Okay. Um, go back 
to the beginning though. Okay. Okay. So we just started, we did um, the introductions and then so from seven to seven thirty, although we may, like we said, hopefully be faster, mm -hmm. we're going to do um, sort of update you. I know a lot of you were at some of the remote learning community uh, things at the two of them and also sort of just let you know, Marcel, let you know about the what's happening in on September 30th for America to me. Mm -hmm. And then from 730 to 8, I'm going to try to go through um, quickly like all the responsibilities and the expectations and we're doing it definitely in a shorter time frame than previous years. Um, and then I'll log into Foundant, which is our grants management software and give you sort of a little peek at what, what it will look like and how we're hoping to use it for this year. Mm -hmm. um, do you want Marcel me to like stop sharing for now and we can just talk and then go back? Um, sure. That sounds great. Cause then I'll share the America to me page. So I'll start. So I'll start just with an update as Kathy said on the remote learning community think sessions that we held. Um, and we really appreciate all of you who, who attended those and some of you host, um, served as breakout hosts. So that feedback has been really valuable um, in terms of not only shaping MFEE initiatives, but also we we're able to share some of that with the district leaders. Um, they too appreciated the input from parents um, and it's been impacting the way that they're adapting um, some of the remote learning, especially for our youngest learners. Um, I think, you know, the district is really um, making some quick changes there. But in terms of MFEE, as you heard that night, one of the big initiatives that we're working on and partnering with the Mockler Neighborhood Development Corporation to try to create some spaces in town where um, families who really need more full-time, um, a safe space on a full-time basis, you know, every day from like eight to three, um, where we could try to build out um, some spaces to be able to offer those services to our families. Um, and so we finally, we have made some headway um, and it looks like that will be happening relatively soon. We're shooting for, I believe, October 5th. I believe um, that's, that is in the works, but many of you volunteered to help out with that initiative. Um, so you will be hearing from us hopefully really soon. Um, so we're excited to, to partner to, to make that happen. Um, and then one of the other pieces that we're working on is um, really trying to provide a year long series of supports for parents. Um, the district is moving forward with their parent university. I think as Dr. Pons um, shared on Friday, there will be a series of, of trainings this in the coming weeks um, to help parents understand the platforms that we're using. Um, so really some tech support and they are thinking of bringing in kind of a few waves of support throughout the year. Um, and so I think we'll be really helping to support more of like, um, quite frankly, some mental health needs uh, for parents. Um, so we have, a, a, you know, we've, we've reached out to our network of, of parent coaches and mental health professionals to really think through how we do that in a creative way. Uh, we heard a lot of clear from the things that, you know, parents don't really want like canned videos and webinars that, you know, that, so, um, so we put our thinking caps on and, and, and starting to be creative about how we can um, do those supports. Um, so you'll hear more on that relatively soon. Um, and then the, the, one of the biggest pieces is, how you're involved and really is how we can provide some funding to the district. Um, hold on one second. Can you hear me okay? Keep my, um, I think so. Kathy, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so the third piece is really how we're going to support our district and our teachers. Um, and so our board has allocated about $50,000 just for the educational excellence grants this year. So that's where you all come in. Um, that $50,000 is going to be allocated across the district, uh, all 11 buildings. And we'll talk a little bit more about, about how that gets distributed. And that is specifically to address needs around remote learning. Um, so we're really excited to get this process underway and to help teachers get some tools. Um, and we're relaxing some of the requirements in the past. Um, things like, you know, online subscriptions was not something that we really funded, but we certainly 
um, are working very closely with Dr. Morgan, who will be helping to review the proposals too, to make sure that we're helping to get some of those subscriptions that teachers may need or may, are, are really exploring and finding that are helpful to their students. Um, the district is providing some of that, but if we can provide some complementary support, uh, we're, we've heard from the district that that would be really helpful and certainly we're hearing from teachers that that would be helpful. Um, and then we're also working with the district to do a bigger grant to support some of their initiatives to support teachers around professional development and again around some kind of additional technology support. Um, and then the last thing is we're doing some fundraising to um, help with te technology needs for students. Um, the district has done a, a really good job of getting additional resources to boost what the, you know the supplies of Chromebooks and hotspots that they have, but there's still incredible need. Um, so we're working with them to kind of craft um, some fundraising that would help provide some tools to um, our, our students. Um, so you'll hear a little more of all of those plans throughout the year. Um, but just the the one thing that's coming up really soon is um, something that works extremely excited about. Uh, we've been running this process, The American and Me, um, which is a docu-series that uses, we use the, the American and Me docu-series to run watch groups, uh, where really are learning circles where folks watch 10 episodes of the series and along the way are really um, delving deeper into their own racial literacy. Um, and so on September 30th, on Wednesday night, I just want to Kind of guide you to the where you can click to register. Um, we're very excited to bring in Professor Lewis McCoy, who is from NYU and has written a book, uh, Inequality in the Promised Land: Race, Resources, and Suburban Schooling. Um, so he his expertise is our communities like Montclair, um, really exploring issues of race and equity in predominantly white suburban spaces. Um, and he'll be in conversation with some of the students who um, led the Unity March in uh, in June and who are continuing to do advocacy um, in the district. Uh, so Gen Genesis Whitlick, who is the Board of Ed student liaison and who's one of the leaders of the of Unity Walk, will be present as well as a couple other students that she's working with. So if you can make that, we'd love to have you. Even if you've already done the American Reading Watch group process, join us at 6.30 and hang out till like 7.15. Um, and and hear from Dr. McCoy and uh, and the students. We'd love to have you. So that was kind of our our update. And I will send it back to you, Kathy. Okay, great. Okay. So. Actually, I should ask if anybody oh. has questions. I know I spit a lot out. So if anybody has questions on that, we can certainly spend a minute or two. Okay. All right, Dan. Um, Kathy. So, let's see. Okay. So, as I go through, um, feel free to like stop me with questions. Um, I think that I remember, you know, my first time in my grant liaison meeting, it feels like a lot of information at once, but um, feel free, you'll, you can always call, text, email along the way. And I also think that because this year is so different in so many ways that a lot of the, the information is changing even for us. Like I've already had teachers reach out to me and say like, hey, I'm already thinking of this. And I, I email Maciel. So as I'm going through this, these are sort of the parameters that we have and the plans we have, but it's, it's definitely something that's moving along. So as you listen and learn, don't feel like I need to absorb every detail and get this all right, because it is also, I feel like a work in progress as we kind of figure out what we're, what the teachers are, are needing right now. Um, so I'll just start with the usual. So this is what our grant liaison roles and responsibilities are. Um, and I can also, I'll share these slides with you um, at the end as well. Um, I'll send them out to everyone. But uh, you'll serve as the liaison between, I mean, really what you are is you're your school's expert for us. So you could, you're the link to the teachers, the principal, the PTA. And so um, you can share to them what you're doing along the way with the grants process. Um, we'll talk to you about the, the three different grants we do, but your primary responsibility is the Educational Excellence Grants. 
um, will let your, you'll have all the information to get to see about the social emotional and the PD, the professional development grants that teachers are submitting at your school, but those are decided by separate committees. Um, but it's, it's kind of nice to get, I feel like, the whole picture of what's happening at your school. Um, then you'll review the grant, the educational excellent grant submissions for your school based on the criteria, which is what we'll be explaining. And then you'll have a meeting with your principal to kind of go over all the grants that were submitted. So you'll have that meeting with your principal before you meet back with us. Um, normally, we have a very large grant review meeting where every school presents their grants and we kind of go through them. At this point, right now, we're thinking because of the tight timeline, we may end up doing smaller meetings with either just individual schools or if we break them, I don't know. We, we still aren't sure if we'll break them down small, how small we'll do. Um, but because this is really, so normally as I go through, this process is normally um, over a few months, but we're trying to do it now in a few weeks to really give our teachers the support that it seems like they need. Um, then you'll um, share analysis and recommendations at the grant review meeting with us. So you will talk through the grants, we'll talk about your principal's priorities and sort of work through um, the evaluations, which we'll also show you and we'll talk about um, how the grants fit into the framework. Um, and then honor the confidentiality of the grant review meeting in the process. Any questions can be referred back to us and be a positive representative of them at the meeting. Um, so this is the timeline as we're, we're seeing. So normally this timeline goes basically to the end of the year, but we're hoping to do it as fast as we can. So um, the, RFP, the RFPs have already been sent out and I also sent them to you. Um, MFEE will then, we're meeting with you now, and then, so now over the next three weeks, um, the teachers will be submitting their grants. So this section, September 20th to October 2nd, um, you know, we're a little bit, so normally in a normal process, we encourage you to go to the schools, you meet with the teachers, you try to encourage them to do grants. I think, we think, I mean, to be honest, we didn't even know that if teachers would want to submit grants at first. Um, we kind of thought teachers might be overwhelmed. They're not going to want to think of innovative ideas. But in fact, very shortly, like within the first week of school, we had teachers emailing like, can you help? I want this. Can you help? I want this. So like, I think that teachers have a sense of things they want and they need. Um, so um, what we're thinking, and I'll be in, in another slide, is that possibly you might reach out to your principal and say, should I host a Zoom session where teachers could pop in if they have questions. But it isn't as much as normally for liaisons who are returning, we kind of go to the schools and kind of, you know, talk to teachers and encourage them to apply. Um, our sense is now that the teachers are pretty, are working really hard and are pretty overwhelmed. So if they have an idea, they'll come to us. And I don't think that we need to necessarily go to them and say, you should be coming up with creative ideas. Um, and then, so the applications will be due on October 2nd. And then our hope is that on the week of October 5th, you'll meet with your principal and then you'll meet with us. So we're hoping to put that all into one week. So you'll go over all the applications first with your principal and then you'll come back to us and we'll kind of talk through um, everything. And then we also on our end will be meeting with the central office staff to kind of see how the proposals fit in with some of the tech requirements. Um, and then, so yeah, so we're, I mean, I, in my dream world, I'm hoping we're gonna get teachers things all in my dream world, the, the second and third week of October. But um, we really wanna get them the tools they need as quickly as possible. Um, so your task list, this is for, for uh, the task list that we see for you. Um, you'll email the principals after this meeting to introduce yourselves as your grant, grant liaison. So we have not reached out to your principal and given them your names and your emails. So I would have one of you from your school um, make sure to send your list of names and emails. And then the most important thing is to get a date for the week of October 5th to meet with your principal. And that would probably be, I mean, if I had to guess, it would be 
we have no idea really, I guess, how many applications it could, I'm sure it's no more than an hour that you would need with your principal to go through the applications we get. Um, I'd also suggest that you reach out to your PTA leaders and let them know that we are doing these grants um, and, are, and sort of give them a little overview of what we're talking about tonight. Um, as we suggested, you could offer to do a Zoom workshop call with the teachers. I think it's gonna be school specific. I'd, in your introductory email to your principal, you could ask him or her what they think if this is something that would be useful um, to your school. And then before meeting with your principal, you'll fill out all the evaluations, which we will show you. And those are in Foundin, which is our grant, evalu uh, our grant management system. So these are, so right now, the Educational Excellence Grants for 2020, these are our funding guidelines. MFE awards grants to Montclair Public School faculty and staff for innovative projects that will have a direct impact in the classroom. This year, to support educators as they continue to adapt to the virtual landscape, MFEE will focus educational excellence grants on boosting remote learning. So I feel like the boosting remote learning is really, is, is the key thing that we're looking for. So um, they'll boost and enliven remote learning, um, support collaborative project-based remote and hybrid learning, engage and support parents as learning partners, and teach students time management and organizational skills to learning is there is a sense that you know the social emotional needs are, are are pretty big, and we have social and emotional grants, but we'd really like to encourage teachers, and we'd really like to fund grants that are focused on thinking of ways to connect students uh, in this remote learning atmosphere. So, I mean, I think I, I think we'll get grants for things that are say as you know boring as a document camera, but I also think that there's a lot of innovation and and project-based things that can happen that can create connections from students. And so I, that is our hope that um, teachers will see this as a chance to sort of do something different and connect the students more. So these are not, as you'll see when we get to the evaluation, these are all things, I mean, the number one goal is that it should boost and enliven remote learning. All the other things are kind of things that could add points and make it a more exciting and, um, meaningful um, project, I would say. The maximum grant award this year will be $500. Um, MFEE awards partial funding in many cases, and we definitely encourage staff to collaborate across grade levels and within the school building. Um, if you, um, I think that from my experience, and I'm sure many liaisons feel that like they've had this experience, um, you know, these are the guidelines, but you know, if teachers have like amazing innovative ideas that are cross grade levels, affect multiple students and are more than 500, I mean, I think that these are guidelines and we pretty much stick to them, but there's always those exceptions that are truly amazing and they kind of get pulled out and become sort of something that we, we're always, I mean, the number one thing to remember is we're looking for innovation and exciting ideas. Um, and so in addition, each school's grant allocation is determined based on the population of the school. So at some point in this process, there is a document that we have, we get from the district that breaks down the population of each school. So we take um, that and we divide out the $50,000 and that is sort of your allocation for your school. So we try to be fair. Um, so certainly the high school is our largest school, so they get a lot of the funding, but at some point, you know, as your grants come in, we'll say to you, this is your sort of ballpark figure that you need to be within. Um, so you look at your grants within that funding. Items that MFE does not fund, so teacher stipends, um, if they, for anything outside of school hours, class trips, assemblies, snacks, consumables, 
um, things that have a limited use. And like, as Marcel said, normally we would never, we don't usually fund subscriptions, but obviously remote learning, I'm expecting a lot of teachers will have ideas for innovative platforms that are subscription based. Um, so that's different this year. Um, programs that occur outside the school day or require a substitute teacher, these are, uh, go to the PD graphs. Um, so, so far, um, and Marcel, feel free to drop it, uh, pop in on this one. We, we did meet with Dr. Morgan, who's the assistant superintendent for curriculum and kind of um, talked about what we were seeing and, and the feedback that we have heard is, I mean, they're very excited to, she, she seemed very excited to have teachers have the opportunity to innovate, innovate like in their individual ways. They're buying, you know, tools to help say like K to five, the middle school, the high school, but she certainly seemed to be, you know, happy to have um, teachers innovate on in their own ways. Um, and then I know Marcel, you talked about that. Yeah, we're looking to support the ongoing professional development as well as the social and emotional needs for students and parents. Yeah, I'll just jump in that um, I think there were, I've seen a little bit of chatter, like especially in the high school level, parents are concerned that some teachers, you know, still need professional development to, to really um, be successful during remote learning. Um, and, and that is coming. The district is committed to that. And like I said, we're hoping to um, provide some significant funding to help them with that. Um, and I also just wanted to note that the, in terms of the guidelines for the educational excellence grants, as Kathy said, like the main, we wanted to make it relatively easy for a teacher to, you know, have a, a proposal that would fit. So that's why we have broad kind of guideline of boosting remote learning. We recognize that teachers are, you know, some teachers, um, you know, may not have a lot of bandwidth to be particularly innovative, but they have some critical needs. And so we wanted to create space for that. Um, and still we wanted from the feedback that we got from the thanks, um, we, figured this was an opportunity too to kind of incentivize um, teachers, many of whom are already thinking of doing things like kind of project-based learning or collaborative learning to really help with the social connection for students, particularly in the, in the middle school and high school grades. We heard that that was really helpful. Um, just teachers were doing that in the spring and, and parents noted that that really helped their teenagers find ways to connect. Um, so we're hoping that that will again incentivize more teachers to do that. Um, so, you know, again, that feedback has been has been helpful. And I just wanted to point out too, we do, we fund about 85 to 90% of our grants when you count the partial funding that we get, because we recognize that um, even if we can do a little bit to get the teacher goals there, um, that will help. And so we, we, we are very aware of that and we do uh, provide um, partial funding. So. Um, and then the last thing on the consumables, I just wanted to point out that there are times where like in terms of, well, just like to back up the overall goal of the educational excellence grants is really to complement district investments, so to speak, right? Like, so the district might have, you know, they're taking care of Zoom and Google Classroom or whatever. And, and um, but if a teacher is, you know, sees a tool that is particularly helpful or he or she has a creative way for engaging students and then we want to help with that. And also we've, we've heard from teachers who have done projects, um, really creative projects and they needed materials and supplies for the, for the kids that were technically consumable. But the vision was so exciting that we were like, you know, if, if the consumable items are in service of this really great vision and this exciting um, oper learning opportunity for kids, we've, like, that's not the same as buying construction paper, right? So the difference, you know, we don't we don't buy typically just you know construction paper because the teacher needs some glue or some you know standard supplies, but if it's in service of you know like I said a bigger project um, that is particularly creative, we understand that they need that to accomplish the, the mission of the of the proposal. Um, so just wanted to give some of those nuances. You know, and I was just also thinking just to mention to everyone. In the spring, we did um, a retroactive grant process. Um, and basically what we did was just to show teachers that we appreciated that what they were doing in the spring, which many of them from the, the sudden shift to remote learning were 
looking for tools and and doing things and just spending their own money to do what they had to do to be able to educate our kids. So we offered them the, a retroactive grant process. And it, I mean, it was nothing huge. It was a simple um, form that they filled out in Foundin in the grant system. And it was a maximum of $100. Um, but they just simply submitted receipts and we sent them checks for, for what they um, had spent money on. And now we are not planning to do that. You may get that question. Um, we are not planning to do that at this time. Um, and I don't know myself, you, what, I mean, like if teachers ask, like, I've already spent money, can I apply? Or, um, I don't know if that will come up, but in general, this funding is supposed to be for ideas and then we, they are awarded the money and then, and then get that. Right. That, that is the, that is the way these are operating is that, and, and the teachers, like we, like Kathy said, we weren't sure that this was even going to work, uh, because they have so much on their plate. But they started emailing us saying, hey, are the grants coming out? <laughs> I've got some ideas. Um, so we figured it was worth running it and trying to do it quickly. So. Okay. Um, we do. So the other grant programs that are happening, uh, the social and emotional learning grants. Um, so um, that is, those are happening. Um, and they are for you know, and obviously we know this is even bigger deal now. So to foster connection among students and or between teachers and students, provide strategies for managing stress, expressing and navigating emotions and increasing self-regulation and teaching students the importance of helping others in their home, the community or the greater world. Um, the maximum grant award will be $500. Um, I know that and one of the things that I feel like we saw last year was a lot of teachers went towards the social and emotional learning grants, even though a lot of them could have been under the educational excellence. Um, I just, and I would say that if, depending on, you know, your conversations with teachers, the, the bucket for educational excellence grants is much larger than the social and emotional learning grants. So if there's an educational component, I would encourage teachers to keep it in the educational, um, I would like, in the educational excellence area rather than feeling, I think sometimes teachers feel like, Oops. I think you're frozen, Kathy. I'm gonna finish her thought, because <laughs> I think I know where she was going, uh, that teachers feel because their proposal, you know, it does have to do with social emotional, um, they will uh, kind of, uh, small. oh, there you go. <laughs> Can you, are you back in? Yes. So you were saying that you think that teachers sometimes will um, gravitate towards the social emotional application. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and so what Kathy's saying is because that, that funding stream is somewhat more limited. We have a designated donor um, and that fund actually um, is, is become smaller. Um, so if it's a really, um, it's, if it's an idea that could also work as an educational excellence, we would encourage the teacher to, to apply under the educational excellence application because there's, as Kathy said, the funds are, we just have more to, 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 to fund through that funding stream. Um, and just so you know, those educational excellence grants are thank you, thank you for all the toasts and teacher tributes that you uh, gave this spring because that's what's funding these grants. And things like, you know, the we have a, a fundraiser coming up. Um, in November, we'll have another fundraiser in the spring. Like those are those unrestricted fundraisers, like the Amazing Race and the um, Show Up and Show Down. Like those help us to run the grant program. So anything, anytime you're drinking or eating ice cream or you know supporting an, a team, this is what you're doing. Your dollars are helping us to really have a, a robust fund to be able to support teachers this way. So thank you very much. Um, all right. Yeah. And then the PD grants, um, the professional development grants, they're awarded to faculty for uh, PD that strengthens their skills to improve student achievement. Priority will be given this year, of course, to teacher to support teachers with remote learning. And they're from 75 to uh, $400. Um, and again, this is, we, there is a separate committee that evaluates these, but you'll get to see them and, and kind of see how they fit together and, and work in your school. 
Uh, Marcel, you want to talk about the excellence and equity grants? Absolutely. So the board um, just recently allocated $150,000 to support grants um, and proposals in each school that specifically address issues of race and equity. Um, so right now they've allocated about 10,000 per building and 50,000 for the high school. Um, again, because it has the lion's share of our, our students. Um, so that, prog that application is already on our um, and found it and we'll be sending that out actually after September 30th. Um, after the America to Me launch. Not that they're related, not that you have to do America to Me to be able to apply for those, not at all. We just feel that um, folks who have gone through the process will probably, their eyes are open and their ideas are percolating. Um, and so we thought it would be better to kind of wait and also with all that's going on. Um, so they'll be more publicly um, shared after September 30th, but we wanted to let you all know, uh, particularly if, you know, I know that many of the schools have already created um, equity committees and the PTAs have you know, the, the um, equity groups in the schools. So just, you know, pass that along. Um, like I said, we'll be doing more outreach after September 30th, but as grant liaisons, we try to give you as much information about what's going on in the organization so that you can help us to kind of spread the word. Okay. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, show you, I'm going to go into Foundin, um, and then I'm going to show you what the evaluations look like, and that can be a next step to us talking a little bit more about the grants. So, okay. Just have a, a quick question. Um, yeah. Just about, I, we always tend to get a lot of questions about the previous year's grants. Teachers mm -hmm. saying, oh, I applied for this, but I didn't get, get what I applied for yet. What's the status of last year's grants, like especially for the teachers that asked for like physical things for their classrooms, did they get them or because of the end of school, are they still in limbo? Do you have any info on how that's, how that's going for last year? Yeah, um, so what we did, any, so anyone who, ha so. Hold on, I think, can you all hear Kathy? No. Okay, hold on, Kathy, we can't hear you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, uh, let me chat with her. She's- Anyone? Uh, oh, there we go. Hi, Kathy. Do I keep coming, going out? Yeah. Oh, you wanna talk? Go ahead. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, what we did is we actually, because there were some requests that were teachers were, teachers had not, purchase their item or order their items and they were physical equipment or you know some were school-wide projects that were going to involve contact and you know dancing and theater and things like that um, so we asked the teachers that if they couldn't execute their proposal this year if they would consider releasing the funds back to the foundation so that we could really target funding to support them during remote learning. And then they would have, we would ask them to reapply, but we're gonna, it's gonna be like a condensed form that will give them priority in the following fiscal year. So in the following school year, when we're hopefully back in buildings. Um, and most of them were very eager to do that and to support. Um, so, so that's where we're at. We've actually, we've sent it to every grantee from last year. Um, and I think we've gotten uh, responses back from everyone now. Yeah, and if anyone, any past liaisons wants, I can send you a list, like a, if you're curious of what was, what, what teachers had not submitted or you want to see, I can easily send you that too. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see what, what the holdover was. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the other, the, yeah, the other thing too, um, that I was thinking, um, was um, just to mention is that their application from last year is saved in Foundin. So even though, even if they released the funds, it's still in there. So even that is still saved under their name, which makes it a little easier. Yes. Yep. Um, so I'm going to actually go in, Tracy, I'm going to go in under you because I made a fake application to show. So, and I signed it to you. <laughs> so normally when you log in as a, an evaluator, 
you'll have, so nobody has anything yet, but you'll have basically here, um, any of the grants from your school will assign them to you to evaluate. So I just made up a fake one, um, pretending I wanted a document camera and I'm a teacher and Tracy is um, my grant liaison and is getting them. So um, I will log in to show you. Actually, we had started to fill it out. Oops. I have to go here. And then down here. Okay, so it's pretty cool. So when you get an evaluation assigned to you or an, um, uh, an application, you'll be able to log in and you'll be able to see on one side, this side, is it everything the teacher wrote in their application? So you get to go through and see everything. And then on the other side, this is what you'll be looking at to evaluate their application. So Marcial, did you wanna start and talking through? Is it, and I can go through or? Sure, and so this, um, the teachers actually got the evaluation, the rubric, um, so that they get a sense of what we're looking for um, in the application. We're trying really hard not to make it super onerous, <laughs> this application. We did end up keeping some of the components, but we made some of the questions optional. But the, you know, we do um, have the, the first criteria is just a little bit of the quality of the proposal. This is something we've been pushing um, with the, working with the teachers over the years um, because we have some teachers who really do an incredible job. Like they really put a lot of thought into it. They, you know, get their research and um, and then we have some teachers not so much. And so we're trying to really reward the teachers who who are putting a lot of thought into it, right? And and not just like putting in a list of items that they need. Now this year, that being said, we recognize that they're they are dealing with a lot. So we'll kind of you know, be a little generous in terms of the reviewing of the application and, and this kind of first bucket of the quality of, of the proposal. You know, we don't want them to just kind of slap something together, but we understand we're asking them to kind of do it very quickly. Um, so Kathy, you want to scroll down and, and the buckets that you'll see are kind of, we just modified them for this, this go round. So addressing remote learning priorities, obviously is, you know, 10 points. That's, that's the core of what we're looking for. Um, and, and we do um, applications that are serving a high need population and you can see the bullet points of what, um, what we you know, considered a high need population. Those are gonna get a little, a, an extra leg up because you know, one of the roles of MFEE is really to try to lay, level the playing field for students um, you know, who, are, who have multiple needs. Um, so if a teacher is thinking about that too, we wanna honor that. Um, so those also get, get some extra points. Um, the collaboration piece, we asked them, again, we you know, try to, um, to uh, motivate them to work together. So it's not like one teacher just like trying to get a bunch of supplies for him or her own classroom, like really try to work with your grade level and to think about how to collaborate together. That is an optional question for them this year. Um, so when they, on their end, they don't have to, um, you know, if, if you know, we ask them, does your project involve collaboration? If so, explain how. But you know, as Kathy, very easy. If you're just looking for a doctor to kind of say like no, <laughs> you know, they could just literally say no, move on because it's not required. Um, but you know, we're just looking to plant the seed. But we certainly don't want, like I said, we don't want to make it super um, burdensome. Um, similarly, with the parent engagement, while we do want them to be thinking about how they're communicating these this project or this particular resource. Um, because we want you as parents to know what's happening in the classroom and if they can engage you in the project, awesome. But again, that's, um, that's optional this year as well. Um, and the measuring impact, you know, that is, we're not looking for heavy data. We're not looking for them to like, you know, kind of do a pre and a post or anything, even if they can just give some anecdotal, like, you know, this is what I noticed, you know, more kids, kids who are engaged because we use this particular software or my document camera allowed me to, you know, be able to kind of show, um, you know, my algebra students more, you know, in, you know, it wasn't writing on a piece of paper or whatever, like it really enlivened it. It was a, a useful tool. And, you know, maybe you get some comments from some kids or something like that. Um, it's ho helpful for us just because it puts that thought process in their head that like, oh, let me just think about like, 
how this made a difference in my classroom. And in the final report, we do ask them just to throw us, you know, like a paragraph that lets us know how, how this made an impact in your classroom. But it also helps us as, as a fundraising organization to be able to pull little bits to share with our donors. They're like, listen, look what you did in this classroom. Look at how this particular tool made an impact in, in our kids' um, learning. So that's, that's um, we're, we're asking that question for both reasons. Um, Hi, quick question, um, Aziel, sorry to interrupt. This is Veronica. Yep. Uh, you mentioned that you um, don't necessarily ask them for very metrics heavy like feedback, either pre or post, but I am curious for, and I'm happy to table this question for later, but for MFEE grants, I'm just thinking about how something that was a grant request might end up being elevated to become a best practice at a school. Like how do you evaluate these at the end of the year and almost like uh, germinate seeds at other or use this to, to seed other schools or, or classrooms? That's a really good question, Veronica. And so normally this measuring impact question is a little more stringent and does ask for, and, and does name things like pre and post and um, a, a couple other um, examples of how to measure impact. Um, and and it, so it, it, it became a little um, more, we were requiring teachers to do a little more in terms of measuring impact. Um, for this cycle, we're kind of loosening it a little bit, but um, we are really interested in kind of evaluating this, this grant process as a whole and for exactly those reasons that you've mentioned. So we work with the Center for Research um, in Education um, at Montclair State, they're helping us evaluate a few of our projects. This is one that we're hoping we can connect with them on, um, but waiting for like post, hopefully there's a COVID time. Understood. Yeah. That makes it, sense. This is my first year as a liaison, so I didn't have insight into yeah, that. No, Thank but um, no, it's something that was definitely on our radar as well. And, and just to give you a tiny little anecdote of how we use these, because you're absolutely right. This is part of what I think what's so exciting about the grants is not only the impact that it has in a particular teacher's classroom or for a group of students, but really we're able to see, you know, kind of across the district, some really cool ideas that are happening in different schools. And so we're actually able to funnel up that information to the district. And it really provides the district with an invaluable opportunity to see what's happening in their schools because they don't really have a comparable mechanism uh, for doing that. So that's why we work really closely with Frank Sedita, Marcos Vargas, Jennifer Goforth, and Dr. Morgan because you know, as those curriculum supervisors and, and Dr. Morgan as the head of instruction, we want them to hear from the teachers kind of on the front line, so to speak, and see how, you know, what they're thinking of. So that back and forth is really valuable for the district. And just one small example, for example, we got um, several grants years ago for alternative seating, things like, you know, hokey stools and standing desks and things that we were starting to see that, that more and more teachers were asking them in, in, in gen ed classrooms, right? Um, and so when we talked to the district to say, we were talking with the head of um, pupil services and, She's like, oh, you know, those could probably come un under my budget because they're special ed teachers. I said, no, these are gen ed teachers. And so she was like, that's so fascinating. And so we started to look at this and she's like, I cannot believe that they're asking for this. Like, that's fantastic for so many reasons. Um, so that has been something that we have and now have all funded alternative seating all across the district. Um, and that's something that, you know, was, was seated um, through these, these grants. Um, but there's been lots of things thank like, you. you know, software and different tools and things like that. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think, you know, the last question on the evaluation is just um, communicating um, MFE. Oh, that's the application, but really the recognition piece. And again, um, it, this is about helping to make sure that we can sustain the program and sustain donor support for it. So the more little stories that we can get from teachers or if there's a particularly innovative project that a teacher is doing that's going to get some high marks because it's something that we can share and it doesn't have to be super elaborate oftentimes some of our smaller grants are just as exciting just because it's it's really the innovation of the teacher um, that we're trying to highlight and how the how these funds can really spark that um, so you know a really cool idea even if it's a small request is something that will get high points uh, because it's something we can share and with our with our perspective our donor base 
So I think that's all of them, right, Kathy? Yeah. And there's a little space for you to write comments. And I also think like for returning liaisons, um, you know, as someone who's done the process, sometimes we're, we're really trying to use the evaluation a little more this year to help to make concrete, you know, how you're ranking the applications. So like if you, if you are, I have been in a school who had, you know, uh, a, a $4,000 allotment and the teachers requested 12,000 and how do you divide that money fairly? So we're hoping, you know, that the evaluations are a tool so that you feel you can really look at that and, and look at, be fair to your teachers. Mm -hmm. All right. Does um, Kathy, where are we in our agenda? <laughs> are we good? Pretty good. That was, yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, that was. I mean, that was really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to just check in because we definitely have time, and I know, especially for some of the new um, liaisons. If you have any questions, it's kind of a lot of information. We hope that the time and Kathy will be sending you the documents, so you'll have them. Um, but we hope that the, the timeline kind of helps just to give you a sense of like what you need to do in the next, like this week, um, and then be ready for when the proposals come in after um, October 2nd. So like a week, in a couple weeks. Um, and we have decided, we've talked about if we don't um, get, you know, kind of a lot of applications this round, we'll, we'll, we'll assess like where we stand in terms with the funding and maybe we'll do like a second round um, because we certainly don't want, you know, we want to try to, we want to try to be super responsive and get the, the resources to the teachers, but we also know that that really tight timeline might just close some teachers out. So we're hoping that, you know, there will be some funds and maybe we can run a second cycle. Um, this is Sheila. I just have yes. two questions. Yes. Um, do we tend to have teachers that are new to the district apply for these, or do we do we track any of that to see if they're aware of these these grants and how they can be helpful? That's uh, a really good question, Sheila. So we um, in the last few years, but last year we were more intentional about it. We actually sent a, a welcome letter to all new teachers with a little candy bar and a little like, just like, please apply, please apply. Um, because we know that a new teacher, they have so much that they have to deal with that this could just fly through their radar. Because just so you know how the word gets out, the district sends emails to them so that they let them know, hey, MFE grant applications are out. The principals send the emails to their staff. Hey, MFE grant applications. We're hoping like as, as many different messengers <laughs> can get the word to them. Uh, but we hope too that you all, especially, um, and so we this year we will be sending them a special email. We won't give them a hard copy letter, obviously, with a candy bar. But if um, we'll send them an email, but you can also check in with your principals and say, listen, can we just do a little special, you know, outreach to our new teachers because they often don't have anything um, and you know right now our, our our classroom teachers also may not have everything with them in their in their home spaces but you know they have a real leg up the, the teachers the veteran teachers they know this process they've got their you know materials they've already got them. but our new teachers yes please you know we'll we'll do some outreach but if you want to kind of double up and help um, you know do a little special outreach to new teachers in your buildings that would be awesome Yep. And thank you. And the second question was, do we have each other's email so we can decide who's going to send out that email to represent each school? Or if I missed it, I apologize. But do we have a roster of who's who yep. for each school? Yeah, I can make sure you have that. Yep. Yes. Yes, we can definitely make sure. I have a question about, hi. Hi. Uh, similar to what Sheila was asking, just about the new, the requirements that sound different this year than past years. I was wondering who is advertising that to the teachers? Is that something that you want us to do? Is that something that's already being done? So when you say like, oh, well, this piece is relaxed and that piece is relaxed. Mm -hmm. Do the teachers know that already? Would that like stop anyone from, oh, I'm not going to go fill that out. I remember from past years. That's, I guess, is that our job or do they know that already? So that's also a really good question. We did include that a little bit in the emails to um, 
the that the district sent out and that the principals have sent out because we give them a sample blurb so we craft the message for them and the message that we crafted was you know we really want to support you we want to help make these faster and we gave them the guidelines um it cannot hurt to emphasize to them as again listen this is you know the mfe recognizes that this is a challenging year um and the application you know some of the questions have been made optional to make it easier and more straightforward so it can't hurt to emphasize that if you wouldn't if if you all could that's why i was thinking you know even if you don't do a zoom workshop with with teachers which is um a lot to ask of you so we we recognize um but you know maybe uh your principals will let you send an email to them uh and with and because again if they're getting the email from different messengers, it, it seems to make a difference. Um, and that way they would have your emails um, because they have not gotten your emails. Um, so the, right now the teachers uh, don't know who their liaisons are. Um, so we were hoping that you, know, you all would email your principals, introduce yourselves, and then ask for that date and also ask, can we either hold a Zoom or can we send our own email with our, with our contact information to the staff? Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, Melissa and then Sarah. Hi. Um, so my question was just about, I, I know in the beginning you talked about sort of um, speaking, speaking to the principal and then they would be the liaison between you and the teachers. But then you mentioned the PTA too. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious, like, um, is this being advertised to the PTA or is it just one of these things where they just should be aware? Um, that these are happening. I'm just curious about the PTA role and all of it. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So we we will be sending the email to the PTAs, letting them know that the, the grants are operating, um, and we can include the contact information, like the names and contact information for you all, so that they you all know, you know, so they're aware that you are on the team um, this year. And a, you know, the way it works in the past is when teach when the liaisons were in the building. Kind of workshopping with teachers, the principal would announce that to the to the teachers, and and oftentimes we'd ask the liaisons to reach out to their PTAs too, because we've learned that PTAs leaders can sit in on those workshops sometimes, and um, they would hear a teacher's idea or what they're requesting, and often Kate times the PTAs would say, you know what, we have funding in our budget for that, you know, we could actually take that out of the MFEE. Um, you know, process altogether. We can we can swing that, which is a great way to leverage resources. Um, and in other cases, when the the grants are already kind of being reviewed and decided, and as Kathy said, sometimes we have you'll you'll get more grant proposals. Well, always you'll get more grant proposals than what you're allocated. And so it's a good way to time to reach out to the PTA and say, listen. We have these really great proposals. We're thinking these are really great fits for MFEE. Is there are there some resources in the PTA budget that might be able to support these needs as well? So that kind of back and forth is really helpful. Um, so we will send the emails to the PTA leaders to let them know a the grants are happening and b these are the liaisons for your school. Thank you. And Sarah. Yeah, uh, this is kind of a newbie question for being on this side of it. I've seen it from the PTA president side, but my question is specific to the fondant system. Um, I know for a lot of us, there's more than one of us who have these roles for the schools. And so in my case, do I, will Amanda and I both have the ability to evaluate, or is it just one person that gets assigned? No, you both will get it. To, you'll both um, be assigned the, the proposals and you'll both review them. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Marcel, mm -hmm. um, I have a question about the race and equity mm -hmm. grant. Um, when did the, how is that getting promoted to the schools? Is that going right to the PTA? Are we supposed to? No, we'll be sending it to rather the schools. We'll be sent same similar mechanism. We're going to ask the district to send it out to the entire staff. We'll also ask the principals to share it with their parent community, and we'll share it with the PTAs if they want to, you know, also send something out or um, 
we typically try to touch all of those bases. And we always say, if you'd like to share this, great. We also say, listen, we know you guys send a lot of information out. Um, most cases, the PTAs and the principals are often very willing to share the, that information, especially that one would be important for them to share because we those are, uh, one of the criteria is the grant has to be collaboratively shaped. It can't just be the principal saying, I want money for this, or a parent, saying, I want money for this, like, or a teacher saying. So the, like I said, one of the requirements is it has to be collaboratively shaped by multiple stakeholders in the schools. So it would be in the best interest of the school to have the principals spread the word and even the PTAs too. Okay, so basically the same guy, anybody can apply for it, the same guidelines, okay. No, it's a little bit different guidelines. So we'll, when we, we, like I said, we will be starting that outreach after September 30th on those. Okay. Um, but when you're in, I'm trying to see if you can access the guidelines through found it right now, Kathy could, I think they could, right? I'll look at that. But you'll, when we send the information out after September 30th, it'll say, it'll have a little blurb that explains them and what the, what the guidelines are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Will the turnaround be as tight as this one? No, no. And the turnaround, and so that's, it actually runs um, somewhat differently than these. These, uh, so those are reviewed by our board members and they're a roll, it's a rolling review process. So when the application is submitted, we have to get back to the applicants within three weeks. There's a whole, um, there's a, it's a multi-step process for that one. Um, there's a letter of intent that gets submitted first. They, they hear back from the board telling them whether the idea is something that the board wants more information on. And then there is an invitation to submit a fuller proposal. Um, and then it's like, I think three weeks after that, app, that part is submitted, then a decision is made. But those will be rolling throughout the year. So, yes. And I'm happy to answer if anybody, you know, like if you want to like shoot me an email or set up a time to call if you have questions. I'm happy to talk to you guys about that too another time. Amanda? Hi, yes, I have just a couple other, I think, newbie questions. But sure. one is what typically happens with the grants that are partially funded? Ah, very good question. So it um, it depends a little bit on the grant, right? But like, um, and we try not to, we try to give partial funding that doesn't totally gut the proposal you know so if it's a proposal let's say it's like a thousand dollar proposal and the teacher wants to totally redo his or her classroom with you know sensory learning and they have like all these bouncy chairs and these you know kind of headphones and and you know i don't know like a million things we'll look at that with the liaisons and say okay how can we kind of still keep the spirit of what this teacher is trying to do, but, you know, not for a thousand dollars. Could we make, you know, this investment and could, you know, she at least have like phase one of her grand vision. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that's where like those PTA, you know, the, the liaisons might reach out to the PTAs and say, Hey, you know what this teacher, and then usually it's also, you know, there's a lot of context involved. If it's a new teacher, that's something we think about like, Oh, you know, this is a new teacher. Maybe we have to, you know, talk to the PTA, maybe we've uh, given a little bit more. And, and when I say talk to the PTA, please know that we don't, we don't like pressure the PTAs to like, Hey, fork it over, you know, like not at all. Like, it's just, it's like an invitation really. It's like, listen, these are the proposals. This is about where MFE is going to be able to support. We just wanted to give you the heads up if there's, you know, some funding. Um, and we have a really good re working relationship with our PTAs and we, we, we really recognize all that they do and their fundraising demands. Um, so, you know, it's really more of like a, a heads up. Um, but in those cases, the guiding principle with the partial funding is that how can we make some investment that doesn't like totally gut the, the vision and gives them something to work towards it. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we use and it's very much a case by case basis. Okay, thanks. And then understanding the process. So when they submit and Sarah and I see the evaluations and can score them, mm -hmm. then are we, I'm a little confused at what happens then. So then it goes back to you and you allocate the money or we work with you to allocate it. I'm, that piece I'm not clear on. Okay, yes. So 
you will evaluate all of the proposals that come in from your school. That week of October 5th, that's why we're hoping that you can get a date with your principal as soon as possible because they'll be busy. Um, you wanna just snag a little time with them. You will meet with them likely via Zoom. They will, the principals will, have, will receive all of the proposals that are submitted from your school ahead of time. And so what that looks like is you sit with your principal and you kind of go through and you and, and Sarah will have met you know, kind of beforehand to just try to get a little bit on the same page to say, you know what, we have 10 proposals. We think these are really our top ones that, you know, really fit MFEE guidelines. And you'll know your budget allocation based on your population. You know, like, let's say, you know, we have $5,000 that's coming in. How, you know, let's see, um, you know, these proposals really are, are a priority. They kind of max out our, our allocation. So you kind of come to that meeting with your own ideas of where you think you know the proposals fit based on kind of MFEE's guidelines um because i will be totally honest um sometimes the principals have different ideas about what grants should be funded um because they have their own priorities right um and so we don't want we you know their input is incredibly valuable and that's why that meeting with them is very important and so you'll have a back and forth with your principal and your principal might say i don't know about you know you might value a, a proposal as the top and the principal might be like ah you know and if it's like no i don't if it's a reason like listen that teacher is asking for a tool that the district has already said no we're not using we can't use that's a real important piece of information that you would want to relay back to us when we have our meeting with you to say, you know, this proposal looked really great, but we heard from Gail that like, you know, the district just isn't in that going in that direction at all. So if we funded it, we'd basically be going at odds with the district that, you know, those make it pretty obvious like, oh, okay, well, we really can't do that. But there, we have had some principals that said to, you know, a proposal, what was an example like there was one principal was like ah we're kind of moving away from books in the library so i don't really think we need to be funding books and we're like mm, no we, we still think books are valuable so right. go okay. ahead and fund that proposal even though the principal is like that's not my one of my priorities so that's kind of give you a flavor of how that back and forth can go but that's why the critical the meeting with the principal is critical because that's how we get their input we want to do want to honor their input as well um so so your, you and Sarah's meeting with your principal will be helpful to, to see where her priorities line up. Um, and that's all information that you'll, you'll bring to the meeting with when you meet with me and Kathy to go over and like, we'll sit together and say, okay, so we got 10 proposals from Northeast. Let's go down one by, you know, like, and some, some liaisons will just say, listen, these are our priorities. These absolutely we cannot fund because the principal said X, Y, and Z. Or these, the, the PTA actually has some funding for, for these kinds of grants. So this is how we're kind of shaping that, how it's shaping up. Um, so you'll come to that meeting with okay, us with information um, from, that you have gotten from your principal and information that you, may, you will have gotten from each other, a little kind of prioritizing. Great, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah, and a lot of times I feel like a lot of times in the principal meeting, the principal will be like, oh, I have that money to spend mm -hmm. on that, take that out of the MFE bucket. And it's just a chance for you to give the teacher a voice that maybe the teacher hadn't expressed they had a need. Um, and that comes back to the principal too. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Nancy. If um, if you get ten proposals, for instance, from a school, and and five thousand dollars has been budgeted for that school, does MFEE typically prefer to allocate that whole budget, even if some of the proposals, let's say, are like you know within the purview of strengthening online learning, but some are clearly not as strong as other proposals? Do do you like organizationally? Do you prefer to just spend out that budget for this round or do you you know do you, do you, do you rather sp spend what you have now or would you say okay actually we have you know a handful of proposals that are stronger than others and we're gonna you know politely reject those that aren't as strong and just keep those funds for a, a future round of funding like how does that work that's a really good question nancy um and um in most in a non-COVID grant cycle, 
The absolute, and, and I, I mean, say even in this cycle, right? Like the number one criteria for a, a proposal that we will fund, the number one thing we look at is the quality of the proposal, the quality of the idea, right? So, cause we, that's how we stay true to our donors when we say that we're funding innovation to be able to, you know, we're not gonna fund every proposal that comes. It has to meet that criteria. It has to be, a, you know, kind of an innovative idea, right? So even let's say you've got just three proposals from your school and they all, none of them were particularly innovative. <laughs> and you have, you know, X thousand dollars for your grants. Like we've had that where teachers are like, I mean, Leanne's like, oh, this, we're easy because we only have three, so we'll fully fund them all. It's like, nope, it doesn't work that way because they have, the proposals have to be quality proposals. Um, so there's still that rubric that we're gonna look at. We're gonna look to see, you know, what their, those scores are. Um, this year, I do believe that we'll be a little more gentle, uh, relax that a little bit because there is such great need from teachers for, for some things just to, to boost their teaching experience. So we want to be, um, you know, a little, a little more lax to, to make sure that they, that they get what they need. Um, but yeah, um, thank you very much. It's a very delicate ba ba balance. Um, and also because, you know, we also want teachers to know, again, this year's a little bit different, but part of why we do have that, that standard and that expectation is because it, what it does is it continues to drive really quality proposals. When teachers hear like the ideas, the great ideas are coming out of these grants, they're inspired to come up with something cool and innovative. So, Donna, did you, go ahead, Donna, I see your hand. That's okay. Um, I, I have a question since, since uh, I'm coming from a smaller school going into the high school. How does it work?